That was a good fucking match. That was that. That makes me glad that I sat down uh, to watch uh, Survivor Series. I ended up sitting here and watching the whole show. I know that these Survivor Series matches probably went about forty minutes to an hour a piece. I'm guessing off the top of my head. The only other two matches uh, was uh, Finn Balor and um, AJ Styles and the Shotzi and um, Ronda Rousey match. But I, I can't remember the last time I watched an entire WWE pay-per-view. But uh, that was the most of WCW feels that I've had, honestly, in a, in a long time. I think that uh, whoever sat down and and, and, and trace this out. I'm sure they wish they had Arn Anderson still under uh, contract in WWE as one of their producers, but uh, I know that Triple H had to have been a part of this, but how much he loves, um, you know, old school wrestling and, and just wanting to, to, to maintain a piece of the past, even though he's moving into the future. I can tell you that um, um, the one thing I didn't like was the one thing I didn't understand because I didn't watch SmackDown was they had Roman Reigns come out last. And that makes the most sense with him being the champion and the base name that was in the match. But with him being on the heel team, that means the baby faces had to have the advantage uh, throughout the whole thing. And uh, I, I think it's the first time and only time we've ever had... Um, a war games match where the baby faces had uh, the early advantage, uh, having the the two on one to uh, basically start um, the show. Um, you know, really good stuff. Uh, I mean, anytime you get the bloodline together, um, I can honestly tell you that it was the first time that I saw Solo uh, have a match in WWE. I have seen pictures and uh, clips of him, uh, but uh, I didn't know if basically he was living off of uh, the name. Uh, of the bloodline or if he actually deserved to be there. I know that he was a champion when he got called up. He had the belt for one episode of SmackDown and then he ended up giving it up. But um, what a really good match. I mean, the the, the whole basis of the match uh, revolved around Sami Zayn, uh, who we all thought was going to turn on the bloodline or the bloodline would turn on him with the storyline uh, happening the whole entire um, night. But, uh, you know, it really all came down. Roman wasn't even involved in the finish now that you think about it. And, and I'm wondering if where they go from here is, you know, because of what happened with Owens and Sammy, it's almost like an episode of The Sopranos, is that, you know, he was over there, he was talking. We needed him for the war, but now that the war is over, they can sacrifice him. I wonder if that's where they go. They take him out. Um, on SmackDown, and he's no longer going to be a part of the group. But uh, if the bloodline, you know, Roman Reigns is your double champion, was ever going to have a, a chink in the armor, um, it had to be tonight. I mean, this was the match that was made for them to lose. There wasn't a championship on the line. Um, it, it, you know, there wasn't a, uh, you know, if they lost, they had to give a, a title shot to somebody. Um it made the most sense for these guys to get in there. Um, I tipped my hat. I, I thought it was awesome uh, for the Brawling Brutes uh, to be in there. Um, you know, we all thought when Butch uh, got called up to the main roster and they changed his name that Pete Dunne was, was done for and he was going to become some sort of a comedy act. But, um, you know, he was the one who actually got to, be, to start the match. Um Drew McIntyre got some shine. You know, they were, they were putting him over as, as a guy who main evented WrestleMania, won a Royal Rumble, a two-time champion. Um, and then, honestly, Sheamus looked like one of the biggest stars. I, I, it would look like he has to be the guy that's going to be going up against uh, Roman next. I mean, I thought the way he was being put put out there, he was he looked stronger than he did around WrestleMania 28. 10 years ago, um, he, he looked like he was a real star in there. And I know the Brawling Brutes sort of came together and, um, you know, people have loved them. But uh, I didn't know they were as popular as they were right there. Um, damn good finish of this match with um, basically um, Sammy uh, and Kevin Owens having their stare down 
Um, you know, Kevin Owens yelling at him that, like, this is who you think your family is. You're standing up trying to get Sammy to turn and see the light out there. Uh, of course, everybody knows Sammy and Kevin Owens came up together. Um, they, you know, they were a tag team on the Indies who broke into Ring of Honor, um, pushed their way up. And then, of course, Sammy, you know, came to WWE. And then when, when, um, uh, Kevin Owens came, turned on him uh, the first night and uh, set up them having a match for the NXT Championship where Kevin Owens would win the belt. Um, but uh, two guys that, you know, a lot like Marty and Sean uh, that you will always, you know, compare and contrast their careers. But tonight was the night uh, Sami Zayn got uh, got the one up on him. I mean, you know, how many times did they put these guys out there and said this is the last time they're ever going to have a match and the fans come back and say they want to see them uh, fight forever. Um, so the Bloodline gets the win. Really damn good match. It stands up against a lot from WCW. I'm going to go out of my way to make sure I see um, what Jim says um, about the match. And uh, I, I hope he loves it. Uh, I understand, you know, the women's match wasn't, you know, the best of all time, but that yeah, men's match stands up. WCW quality right there. Peace out. Great show, guys.